Let's take this off where we left it. We talked about how to give the prefix as a name to an organic compound. And coming to the suffix, if there are no functional groups, then the suffix will depend on what type of bond there is. If it's a single bond, like this one, then we call it propane. If it's a double bond, like this one, we call it butene. And if it's a triple bond, like this one, we call it protine. So, what if there is a functional group then? Well, then we have to take a look at the list which tells us what names to add to the suffixes of the compound. For example, let's say I have a 6 carbon compound. Then we know the prefix is hex. Then if it has an aldehyde, then I call it hexanal. And if it has an alcohol, then I call it hexanol. And if it has a carboxylic acid, I call it hexanoic acid. But then again, what if there are more than one functional groups on the carbon chain? Well, then you look at the list. What list? Well, the list that is made by the IUPAC organization that tells us about the order of precedence or the weightage of importance that we need to give to the functional groups. What exactly do I mean by that? Well, the list says that give the most importance to carboxylic acid, then esters, then amides and so on. So that means if I have a 5 carbon chain with a carboxylic acid on it, then no matter whatever is on the chain, I give the most importance to carboxylic acid and I call this pentanoic acid. This is what we call the parent functional group. A parent functional group is basically the group that defines the suffix of the compound. Say I have a compound with an aldehyde and a ketone. And according to my list, aldehyde is above ketone. So this compound will have a suffix that ends with AL and this is the parent functional group. But we can't just ignore the other smaller functional group that are on the compound. We need to identify them, put them in the name and also mention where they are in the compound. That's a lot of work, but it's fun, so let's do it. We used the example of cinnamaldehyde previously and it looks like this. Its name is 3-phenyl-prop-2-enal. So let's see. It says prop, so there are three carbons like this. And it has a phenyl and an aldehyde group. So, according to the preference list, the suffix will be al. And the 2-ene tells us that there is a double bond on the second carbon. And the 3-phenyl tells us there is a phenyl group on the third carbon. And because of the al, we stick an aldehyde like this. We used the example of cinnamaldehyde previously. And it looks like this. Its name is 3-phenyl-prop-2-ene-al. So, let's see. It has prop in it, so there are three carbons like this and it has a phenyl and an aldehyde group. So according to our preference list, the suffix will be al and this is the parent functional group. And the 2-ene tells us that there is a double bond on the second carbon and this 3-phenyl tells us that there is a phenyl group on the third carbon. And you see this al here? That's why we stick an aldehyde like this. So what have we learned in this video? We have seen how to give the names for the organic compounds and especially the suffixes and the functional group that are in the organic compounds. So until next time, happy learning.